Week 12 felt vindicated for leaving the Patriots. Tom Brady Sr. told Tom Curran, quote, Damn right. And also added Belichick wanted him out the door. And last year he threw 56 touchdowns. I think that's a pretty good year. Senior Shannon, will Bill Belichick's decision to move on from Tom Brady go down as the biggest mistake in league history? No, I don't think so, Ms. Skip. And I think there's a nuanced approach to this that we have to look at. Let's look at Tom Brady. Do you believe Coach Belichick could have surrounded him with what he has in Tampa? I don't. When Tom Brady's last year, you look at what he had to do, Skip. He had to overpay for two wide receivers, overpay for two tight ends. And even though he overpaid, they still don't have the level of talent that Tom has in Tampa. You mean after Tom was gone? After, yeah, right, right, after Tom was gone. Mm-hmm. Coach Belichick was looking at it from this perspective, Skip. This is what I have. I have an aging quarterback. I'm not. Remember, Skip, he had a, a Julian Edelman who's on his last leg. So after last, he retired. That's how banged up he was. So that's what Tom Brady would have been throwing to. Mm-hmm. He had Jacoby Myers, who they converted from a quarterback to wide receivers. They had a Nikhil Harry, who hasn't panned out to this point just yet. And I don't see how much longer he's going to. I don't see if he's there very much longer. Maybe this year, but probably next year, Skip, he's going to be out. He they took two tight ends. Neither of them panned out. They ended up going to free agency getting John New Smith and Hunter Henry. Yep. They had to overpay for those guys. They had over overpay for uh, – uh, they got the kid from uh, Nelson Aguilar, and mm-hmm. I think they got a kid from San Francisco mm-hmm. overpaid for. None of those guys are better than Chris Godwin. None of those guys are better than Mike Evans. None of those guys are better than Antonio Brown. None of those tight ends are better than Gronk or better than a Cameron Break. So in other words, Skip, Cody. Or O.J. Howard. Uh, uh, yeah, so Skip, <laughs> yeah. when you look at it, I get it. Yep. Tom Brady should feel vindicated because he left a situation where the cover was bare yep. and goes to a store where the cover is stocked. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, it's overflowing. <laughs> Skip, you also remember I tell you, when fa- family members and close friends speak. You, I, I was going <laughs> to remind you of you saying that, right? I tell you, they God. speak for the player. They do. Yes. Yeah, and that, that's why I say, hey, mom, live, let it go. Mm. We, we not, you're not talking. Mm. So for me, Skip, look, I get it. I look at a mistake as something that the biggest mistake would have been the coach selecting Ryan Leaf over Peyton Manning. Yep. But, Skip, if you tell me Coach Belichick was going to stock the cupboards and he let Tom Brady go, Yep. I would say, you know what, that was a huge mistake. But Coach Belichick is looking at it, looking at what do I have, looking at the way Tom Brady is playing, knowing that I can't get a Mike Godwin, I mean, excuse me, Mike Mm Evans or Chris Godwin. He had a B, but Mr. Kraft and something happened, and they they, they, now you 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 got to get you. Because I believe even with just A, B in Edelman, Tom was on, on pace to have a pretty good year, Skip. He just needed weapons. He's 44. He's not 30. So him just being able to just elevate everybody else, he needs a little help now. There's nothing wrong with that. And I don't believe Coach Belichick was ever going to be able to provide that. Mm-hmm. And even when you look at the defense, Skip, they ain't got no Devin White. Hightower is good, but he ain't Devin White. Yep. And Levante David and that defensive front with Shaq Barrett and JPP and Sue and Vita Vea. They weren't going to have that in New England. So I believe that's why Coach Belichick was so easily willing to move on, knowing that I can't give him what he wants. But Tom should feel vindicated. Uh, uh, Mr. Brady Sr. should feel vindicated Mm -hmm. that, you know what, I wasn't washed up. All I needed was a little help, help that I wasn't going to get in New England. Okay, I got you. (sighs) Look, no matter how you want to couch it, or how you want to parse it, as you just did, Mm -hmm. this still already has gone down as the biggest mistake in NFL history. And I get all the nuances that you just showed, you you detailed for Mm -hmm. us. And I agree with everything you just said. But big picture, you just pushed a quarterback out the door who immediately, even in the middle of a pandemic with no preseason, went to another franchise Mm -hmm. that had been woeful, had the worst all-time record in the history of sports as a franchise known as the Suckineers. Right. And he went and won the Super Bowl with that group. Again, the cupboard was not bare. It was actually loaded, but nobody could quite see it. Right. Because Jameis was there, and Jameis was leading the NFL 
In turnovers. In turnovers, by far. Mm-hmm. Run, running away with, away with, what yeah. was it, 30 interceptions 30. and five lost fumbles, mm-hmm. 35 total turnovers. You just can't overcome that in the sport that you play. No. And that's why they went seven and nine the year before, and that's why they were camouflaged, just sitting there hiding in plain right. sight. And the genius in that guy's head said, wait a second. I can go there? Mm-hmm. Really? I mean, I can just, like, walk out the back door right. in New England and and just hop on a flight, and I can go right down there, and I got that at my fingertips? Mm-hmm. Yes, you do. Right. Okay? So no matter how you slice and dice it, it still goes down as the biggest mistake ever because he went and won the Super Bowl in his first go-round with that franchise. So it makes you look all-time bad because you, you made an all-time mistake. But to your point – If Tom stays, it doesn't happen. Right. Because maybe the bigger mistake was made by the owner, Robert Kraft, about five years earlier when he didn't sit back and and have enough vision to see, I've got to take personnel out of Belichick's hands because slowly. No, no, you can keep personnel, but I'm just going to take this personnel out of your hands. Okay, but do you need a GM? Do you need a personnel director? Do you need a draft master? Do you need somebody to come in and acquire players and let Bill coach what gets acquired? But Skip, most of the time when you're dealing with a guy like Brady, in my in my being around the league and following the league closely, when it comes to guys like that. That's an owner and a quarterback dealing with each other. That's not the general manager. Okay. So when something needs to get done, a contract needs to get done, they would work that directly. Eddie DeBartolo is working directly with Joe Montana. Okay, but what I'm saying is – what happened over the last five years in New England? Was, oh, you said for disaster. him to let it get the cover, get that. Just, okay, yes, okay, okay, okay. He, he let it happen. Okay, I'm not okay, talking about the money. Okay, okay. No, I'm, I'm not talking about okay, contracts. Okay. I'm talking about acquiring players. Right, right, right. He let it get the he let failure. It, right, right. Was that that he kept saying because he has no input into that. Right. And and he keeps saying we're getting a little worse, and then we're getting a little worse, right. and then we got a lot worse, and then we got a whole lot worse. But see, here's the thing, though, Skip. Even though the talent was getting worse. Brady was still playing at such a level that he could elevate it and you were winning Super Bowls. And so, Skip, you're blinded. But you look around like, well, damn, our talent is not nearly the level of what X is. But because Brady was at that level, but then the last couple of years, it had gotten so bad that even the great Tom Brady couldn't elevate it anymore. Okay. But he knew that he could go show the sucking ears how to win. Yes, yes. Like, what do we always talk about? My Dallas Cowboys. They just might be the most talented team on paper. And then what happens? Well, they don't have him at the helm. They don't have him running the locker room. They don't have him as the ultimate final voice of reason in the franchise. It's a situation when a guy like that walks into the room and everybody gets quiet. What is he going to say? What does he want to say? What does he need to say? Because I'm all ears. He's instant credibility. Skip, this ain't no, well, if things go right, that's Tom Brady. He's walking in with six six, uh, uh, Super Bowls, all these MVPs. You know what he represents. You're looking around at the talent level. You're like, we went seven and nine. Well, the guy throw for 5,200 yards, yada, yada. Like, hold on. It was kind of like the situation when Peyton walked into the Broncos. Yes, Skip, they won the the division. They were eight and eight. But that's Peyton Manning. That's a whole different ball. That's Tom Brady. Yep. That ain't just some guy. That's the guy. Okay, but at least those Broncos in 2011 had miraculously, yes. thanks to Tim Tebow, won the division and won a home playoff right. game. So at least you had a little momentum right. going, right? Right. And am I going to argue Tebow versus Peyton? No. No. No, no Bronco. No Tebow diehard would have argued and, that. And just like they ain't no arguing Jameis versus Tom Brady. No. No. Just, so, and that's the thing, Skip. When you get that level of talent, they increase what they're seven and nine. They went eleven and five. The Broncos went thirteen and three from eight and eight. You see that talent level, and Peyton's looking around like, okay, where can I go? They got a nice offensive line. Ryan Clady at left tackle. Mm-hmm. They got Demarius Thomas, yeah. Eric Decker, Julius mm, Thomas, no Sean Moreno. Yeah, wait, they got Von Miller. Oh, really? What? Whoa, oh. yeah, Chris Harris. Oh. oh, bingo. Tom Brady's looking around like, okay, where can I go? Mm-hmm. Mike Evans made the Pro Bowl. Chris yeah. Godwin did too. Huh. O.J. Howard, the first-round draft pick. Mm. Man, man, huh. look at those two linebackers. Devin, Devin White was defensive, was defensive rookie of the year. Levante David. Wait, wait a minute. Shaq Barrett led the league in sacks the year before? Aha. Uh-huh. I played against Ndamukong Suh. Aha. Uh-huh. I, play, I played J-P-P? against J.P.P. Yeah. Oh. 
Did you hear anybody in the media <laughs> saying he's got to go to Tampa? No, Nobody said no, that. No, I didn't see it. No, you didn't see it. No. I don't. I never heard anybody else say no, it. No. Right? No. He saw it, and he he made it happen. Mm-hmm. And I, this is, you, you will fight me on this. I do not believe any other quarterback alive could have gone there and done what he did in that pandemic year. I don't think Mahomes could have done it. Aaron could have done it. Name them. Name somebody. But they couldn't have gone and, and, and pulled off what he pulled off in leadership, mm-hmm. in, in stature, in magnitude of walking in and saying, I got this. Well, you're going to have to run. Because eventually, Bruce Arians conceded, like, okay, I need to do some motion. I need to, I need to not ask Tom to throw the ball down the field as much as the, what I'm asking my other, my other quarterback. Skip, there's a reason why Carson Palmer led the league in interception. There's a reason why, if you look at his history, guys throw the ball down the field. And the more you throw it down the field, the more chances you give the other team to come down with it. So Tom's like, okay, give me a little motion. Let's shorten up some. Man, we got Mike, my, uh, uh, Chris Godwin. Remember, Man, tremendous. everything changed in the bye week. Yes. And they had just lost three out of four games. And we're going to talk right. about this in a few minutes right. here on the show. One of those losses was at home on Monday night to these Rams. Right. Mm-hmm. These Rams had a different quarterback. We'll right. talk about that. But I believe these Bucks had a different quarterback coming out of the bye because I believe he took took it completely over and said, let me run it. Let me 